fun, happy hut day. Uh, let me know where you are joining from. I always like to hear from you. Um, and thank you all for saying, <clears throat> excuse me, hello. <laughs> um, still a little bit chilly in these parts of the world. So I hope you all are staying warm and staying safe and all of those good things. Today, we're going to be talking about a great project that you can make for a Valentine's Day gift or a birthday gift. Any type of occasion is great for pajama pants, especially for the little ones in your life. And we have a brand new free pattern at sulky.com. It's called Kids Pajama Pants. And I'm going to take you through this project today. And I'm going to give you some tips for how to customize the pajamas for anyone on your gift list um, with machine embroidery. So I'll be giving you some pocket options, some cuff options, some embroidery inspiration, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So be sure to put your comments and questions in the chat so that I can address them periodically throughout today's episode. And for everyone or anyone who is liking, commenting, asking those questions, engaging with us today, you are automatically eligible to win the Sulky I Heart You Machine Embroidery Palette. Uh, whenever we're talking about a palette, that means it is a uh, assortment of threads and a machine embroidery collection that goes along with those threads. So this one is the I Heart You Machine Embroidery Palette. It features a bunch of swirly heart designs that are great for lots of Valentine's Day makes and 10 spools of sulky rayon thread. So that is the giveaway today. So be sure to be commenting, liking, sharing. Make sure you've liked the Facebook page if you are watching on Facebook and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are watching live on YouTube today. All right, lots of you chiming in and saying hello. Appreciate it so much. Southern New Jersey is in the house. Naples, Florida, Columbus, Ohio, Washington, San Diego. So we are all over the place today. I love it. Okay, before we dive into the pajama pants pattern, I don't know if you all can see the bag hanging behind me here, but this is the bag we are making in our next live video cast at sewingonline.sulky.com. It is the Casey Duffel. And here is a picture so you can see it a little bit more up close. This is the burgundy version of the bag. And I wanted to start off by showing you this because I finished the other colorway just yesterday. And I really can't decide which one I like more. The burgundy is so great. It features this canvas fabric uh, from Cotton and Steel. It's a rifle paper print, and it's this great quality canvas fabric, really durable, and the print is absolutely beautiful. I actually bought a rifle uh, paper calendar the other day. I just absolutely love these prints. So, uh, the burgundy is faux leather. That's what the contrast fabric is. And it's on the base as well as those handles and straps. So you have handles and an adjustable strap on this bag. And let me just show you the other colorway we're offering as well. Here you can see it a little bit more up close. So we have the burgundy colorway with antique hardware. And then we have this um, gray colorway with black faux leather and nickel hardware. So I don't know how you are going to decide which kit you want for this video cast, but all the kits come with everything you need to create the bag as well as the paper pattern that is designed by Sally Tomato. So here is the bag I finished yesterday. It's a good size bag. Um, that's why you know they call it a duffel style bag. It's not as large as like your typical uh, duffel bag, I guess, um, but it's so roomy. And so there's optional embroidery on the front and there's enough fabric so that you can either choose the solid fabric, which is also the lining, uh, to do your embroidery and add that to the pocket, 
or you can use the same canvas fabric for the pockets and do your embroidery on there um, or, you know, mix and match like I did on this one. So there's lots of different ways you can make this your own. Um, like I said, adjustable shoulder strap here. So you'll learn how to make this strap adjustable for, you know, over the shoulder or just, um, you know, messenger bag style, however you want to kind of carry it. Or you can take these off and just use the handles. Also, along the side here, this comes out for even more room so you can carry it like this instead and really pack it full of stuff. So I absolutely love this design. It's such a great bag. And I mean, you really can't get better than this fabric print. Um, you know, canvas fabric, when I was creating, or not creating, but when I was testing this pattern, um, I really had a hard time finding canvas fabric at my local fabric shop that I was, you know, excited about. Um, it, it kind of either looks like, you know, outdoor furniture fabric or I don't even know, but I had a hard time finding a cute canvas that I was, you know, like I said, excited about. So these are just wonderful fabrics. I mean, give me a thumbs up if you're, if you're in love with this fabric like I am. Oh my gosh. I can't decide. So what do you all like, gray or burgundy? What are you going with? I love them both. This burgundy has this beautiful green in it too and pinks and the the leather is so just supple and feels so, so nice. It's faux leather. So I will be go guiding you through this project. We're gonna be talking about adding the embroidery, but also how to kind of take an embroidery design and we're gonna deviate from the color sequence chart and we're gonna match the thread colors to the colors in the fabric print and we're going to kind of make the designs our own. Now, the video cast is $5.99 to register. You get 90 minutes of content. Um, let's see, you also get an entire embroidery design collection that's valued at about 25 bucks. It's called Floral Foraging. You will get the whole collection absolutely free just for registering for the video cast. So for $5.99, you're getting $25 worth of designs. You're getting 90 minutes of instruction. You're getting live chat with me to ask questions about the bag, all kinds of things. We will have four amazing door prizes during the event. So it's really, really a great time. If you've never joined us at sewingonline.sulky.com, this is definitely the bag to start your whole journey over <laughs> at the Sulky Education site. Um, so I hope you all can join. It's February 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So this is one of the designs. This is called Floral Foraging Bouquet. And then I featured this one on this design. I believe it's the ginseng uh, design. So they really complement the fabric print so well. And I think you all will enjoy, enjoy the instructions. Okay, Eileen can't decide which bag she likes best. I know you're gonna have to do like an eeny, meeny, miny, mo. We've got people who are team burgundy, people who are team gray. It's it's going to be hard to decide. <laughs> so the kits are already on sale. You can grab up your kit now and it will arrive in time for the video cast, depending on where you're joining us from, of course. So um, already on sale. And you, again, get everything you need. You'll get the embroidery thread, the construction thread, the stabilizer, all the fabrics, all the interlinings, the foam, the faux leather, the hardware, the interfacing. I mean, everything's included, including the paper pattern this time. Um, so good stuff. All right. I had to um, share that with you first and foremost, but let's get into the 
Uh, oh, I think I have to get the gray one after seeing it finished. I know. Oh, Mary is hilarious. I think I prefer the gray, but only because my husband will object less to carrying it. Oh, LaRue says, where would I buy the kits? The kits for the Casey video cast are at sulky.com. You can head on over there and just put Casey in the search bar and you will find the kits for that. I'm sorry, I forgot to put the kits and the registration link for the Casey video cast in the description of today's post. I apologize. We will put them in the comments. I believe I saw them already. And yes, it's February 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's when we go live. Now, if you can't join us live on February 8th, you can always watch everything on demand at any time by going to your library and going to the event page. So once you register, you have all access to that event. And after we go live, um, it converts to an on-demand format. So all you have to do is press play and you can watch the video in its entirety and work your way through the bag, fast forward, rewind, pause, all of those things um, while you're making your own Casey duffel bag. Okay, looks like a very useful bag. Yes, it holds a lot. Joyce wants both, so <laughs> Helen says, I've already purchased this gorgeous kit. It's, I mean, they're just so beautiful. And, uh, you know, if you have joined us in the past New Year's Eve, or we've done the Clara bag, we've done a Boho Bonnie bag, we have done so many bags at sewingonline.sulky.com and we just keep bringing them to you because, you know, we need a bag for every occasion. We need a bag for everything we carry. We need an everyday bag. We need a travel bag. We need a small clutch bag. Am I right? We can never have enough bags. And, you know, this one has this, this great foam interlining to it. So, I mean, it just really has a great structure. See, the whole bottom is this faux leather. It's really durable um, and just greatly constructed. You will love working your way through the pattern. Okay, let's go to another great pattern. This is the kids' pajama pant pattern. And again, it's entirely free at sulky.com. I did link to this one in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing it, hit that little see more button and the whole description will pop up and you'll find the links for everything I'm going to talk about for the pajama pants. So this pattern comes in sizes 2T to 16 years old. So it fits a wide range of kids. And actually, I forgot that I wanted to add an image of whoopsies, Hold, bear with me a moment. Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to add an image of how to tile together the pattern pieces. And I have it right on my desktop. But if you're anything like me, your desktop has so many images on it <laughs> and things to navigate um, that it might take me just a moment. So I was just talking about the Casey bag being... A, a paper pattern, right? So we've got paper patterns in the world and we've got digital patterns in the world. And a lot of the times we are featuring digital patterns um, so that there's this, you know, everyone has this kind of instant gratification, right? We buy this pattern and we don't want to have to wait for it to get to us. So these digital patterns really give us the opportunity to just go ahead, there it is, I finally found it, to go ahead and print our pattern immediately when we purchase it, print it out on our home printer, tile the pages together, tape them all together, cut out the size we need, and get sewing. So I love the instant gratification part of digital patterns. A lot of people, you know, there is a learning curve with a digital pattern because you have to print out all these pages. You have to learn um, kind of the process for taping them together. You know, does number one go next to number two? Does number two go below it? That type of thing. 
So there is a learning curve, but I think that it's, you know, relatively intuitive once you have your layout in front of you. So here is that layout that I was going to show you. Let me get rid of this image so that we can look at it. So once you print out your pages, each page, so page one is going to look like um, everything that is featured in the upper left square here where it says one. That's what your page is going to look like. So you will cut off the margins of every other page so that you can abut the lines on your digital pattern to uh, make sure that one and two are together along their joining line. And there's little notches. You'll see them. They look like dark black kind of diamonds on this um, image that I'm showing you. You want those diamonds to meet exactly at their meeting point, right? So there'll be little triangles and you're forming them into diamonds. Once you have done that, you can tape those pages together. Just use some regular, you know, clear tape and then continue with number three and number four. Then you can see number five is going to go underneath number one. So that is how we're going to tape together all of the pattern pieces. Now, pages 17 and 18 down at the bottom, that is the cuff. So if you're not going to add a cuff to your pajama pants, you're just going to hem it. You don't need to print pages 17 and 18. So you always want to go back to this diagram, which is on the first page of the instruction sheet that comes with the pattern. Sometimes it will be included as a small icon on each pattern piece page. Sometimes like there's So So English does really great digital patterns. They put this little diagram on each page so that it's easy for you to follow and you can always refer back to it. Sometimes it's on the PDF instruction sheet as it as it is with this pattern. So always have that available to you when you're taping together the sheets. So you can see also uh, there's a, 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 I think that's a, there's a cuff, excuse me, and then there's a pocket piece. So if you're not doing the pocket, and actually I think the pocket is 17 and 18, and then that cuff is at the bottom of 13, 14, and 15. Okay. So very easy to print these out. And yes, I know you need 19 sheets of paper in your printer. Now you can always set your printer to the draft setting or the lowest ink setting on your printer settings so that you're not printing out in perfect, you know, um, oh, what's it called? You're not using a bunch of ink and you really don't need this in color um, unless that is easier for you to see the size lines, okay? Now, I print digital patterns all the time. I absolutely love them because honestly, I really have that instant gratification of I bought a pattern and I wanna use it right away. Now, I still use tissue patterns and I have a lot of vintage ones that have been passed down to me and gifted to me and I still love those too, but they are so fragile, am I right? And once we've cut it out, if we don't transfer it to a different um, type of paper prior to cutting, that's the only size we can use, right? We have to either go back to it and create a smaller size um, or purchase it again, really, because that tissue just doesn't hold up. You can always cut out the largest size that's available on your tissue paper and then transfer whatever size you need onto a more durable paper, pattern paper, butcher paper, or even tape together some pieces of paper and transfer it so that you can reuse and preserve that tissue paper pattern. But if you have a digital pattern, you can print this as many times as you want. It also makes it really easy to grade between sizes. So if you have a little one who maybe they have a size 10 waist according to this pattern, and then they have a size eight, um, you know, along the uh, knee portion of the legs, 
You can kind of grade the pattern and makes it much easier to then go and reuse it or just print it again when you need it. So for this pattern, it's very forgiving fit. It is designed for woven fabrics. And today we're really gonna be talking about using flannels. It is winter time and flannels, even lightweight flannels are so great for pajama pants. Now you could also use, let's say like a cotton sateen would be really great. You can even use a quilting cotton, um, but today we're gonna be talking about flannel and embroidering on flannel as well. So just know you can deviate from that flannel fabric, but you do want to use a woven fabric rather than a knit fabric, okay? So um, let's see what else we need to talk about before we go into the construction and embroidery. Um, okay. If you do want to shorten these and make, let's say, just pajama shorts or maybe some, um, you know, capri style, just measure the recipient and uh, there will be lengthen or shorten here portions of the pattern um, that you can follow to just kind of cut them off. Um, if you do want to cut them off, let's say a little bit above the knee or at the knee, you'll want to flare out the bottom just a little bit so that it doesn't kind of taper at the knee. So you can simply just widen uh, the leg lines and cut it off at the intended you know, area. Make sure to account for your seam allowances and if you are adding or not adding that cuff piece that I was talking about. So here is one of the finished um, pajama pant looks. And this one has both the pocket and that super wide cuff at the bottom. The other thing I love about the addition of a cuff is if your recipient grows like a weed, right? Because all kids do. <laughs> you can add that cuff later or even widen it as the child grows and then they will last a little bit longer. So if you want to create pajama pants without the cuff and then add the cuff, you know, next year or in three weeks or whenever the child grows, that's another great idea. All right, so first things first, and that is measuring. Um, you're going to base the size off of the inseam measurement. And this image is a little bit misleading because you want your inseam really on the inside of the leg. So this is really just, you know, showing you where your tape would start, but you would be a little bit more on the inside of the leg to measure that inseam and go all the way down uh, to where you want the pants to um, end, where you want the hem to end. Then you're going to add seam allowance and if you do add that cuff, it's about four inches wide. So keep that in mind as you are deciding on the inseam measurement for the pants that you're going to make. So after you have decided on the size, again, you're going to cut out your taped pattern piece. Um, there will be the same piece for the front and back. Again, this is a very forgiving fit. So you can always go up a size and it's still, you know, it might look a little bit baggy on the child at first, but again, they grow so fast that I would probably make a size bigger for my kids um, just so that they have room to grow in it, but that's entirely up to you. So you're going to gather your supplies. And again, today we are working with flannel and we've got a pink version and then a cool kind of geometric print as well, and then grab up your threads for embroidery and construction. Now, I'm gonna show you some photos that have a surged finished edge to them. You can surge your pajama pants, um, and then you would just need your regular sewing machine or a cover stitch for the, your hems. Um, if you're adding that cuff, you can add it with a serger and double it over so that the whole cuff has a folded edge to the very bottom of it. Um, 
Or you can use your regular sewing machine to do your final waistband seam and that hem. So you don't have to have a serger, but if you do, why not use it for this? It makes it so easy. So for construction threads, you can either use 50 weight cotton from Sulky or 40 weight poly deco. You can also use poly deco or rayon for your machine embroidery. I'm going to show you uh, the machine embroidery done in rayon threads and the pinks over on the right, that is the thread from the I Heart You palette, which is today's giveaway. So everybody who is commenting, liking, sharing today's post is eligible to win that I Heart You palette. You'll see those 10 threads are so perfect for Valentine makes. And that thread palette comes with an embroidery design collection as well. So along with the threads, you'll get lots of swirly heart designs and you can use them for these pajama pants or Valentine's on cardstock or really anything you want to create that has really cute swirly heart designs on it. All right, on the geometric print, you can see a mix of metallic threads as well. So I find, especially with kids items, that metallic thread is so fun. They absolutely love seeing that shimmer. And um, the designer of this is Emily Thompson of Life So Savory. She designed this pajama pant pattern for Sulky and did all of these step outs. So thank you, Emily. Hold, please. Yay, applause for Emily, she's awesome. Um, but she chose this really cute robot design for the geometric pants print. And she subbed in a little bit of sulky hollow shimmer metallic for portions of the robot design. And it just gives that robot, you know, a little bit of, you know, sparkle, a little bit of interest and, you know, loving the shiny things. Me too, Denise. Kids just go crazy for the metallic. So give it a try. You can sub out that thread for a line art portion of the design. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to use those flat metallic threads like Sulky Hollow Shimmer or Sulky Sliver. It's a little bit more difficult to use those for fill portions of designs. Um, they're a heavier weight and they are flat threads and you don't want the edges kind of curling up and twisting and things like that. So if you are subbing out those flat metallics for portions of machine embroidery, you want to make sure to sub those out for straight stitches, not fill stitches, and then you will have better success. And you can always do a test stitch out to make sure that those threads are going to work for those portions of the design. All right, so first things first, and that is machine embroidery. If you're doing machine embroidery, you do not want to cut out your cuffs or pocket first because we're going to do the embroidery first and then cut out those pieces. That allows us to really place the embroidery designs exactly where we want them, make sure that they are centered and looking nice um, on each pattern piece. You can embroider just the back pocket or you can eliminate the pocket and, and embroider along the cuff. It's entirely up to you. But those two places are really great areas for machine embroidery. Um, you know, it allows you again to cut those pieces afterwards, um, but you could certainly add machine embroidery anywhere you want to on these pants. Um, this is the fabric for that pocket piece. So. For the flannel, we are pairing that with Sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer. And I'm gonna show you just how easy this tears away when embroidery is complete. It is the perfect weight for flannel um, and it tears away nice and cleanly once your embroidery is finished. And we're going to mix, or we're going to use Sulky Bobbin Thread, 60 weight bobbin thread, in a color that matches this fabric. You could go with a white or a tan if you wanna do the tan, we have those in pre-wound bobbins, or you can choose Sulky Poly Light Thread, which is a 60 weight thread as well, and that comes in so many colors. You could match that thread to your top thread in the needle um, pretty perfectly as well. So your choice on the bobbin thread, but I would go with something either the exact same weight as what we're using in the needle, 
or a little bit lighter so that you get a balanced stitch out. So once you have your fabric hooped with the Tear Easy, it's really just a matter of following the color sequence chart of your chosen design. You can see this is a cute little heart design and look how cleanly it tears away from that sulky Tear Easy. There is virtually no trace of that stabilizer left. So really beautiful end result. And there is the design in progress with those beautiful threads. So we've got a finished pocket as well as two finished cuff pieces. So once your embroidery is complete, you're going to use those pattern pieces and cut out each piece. So if you're omitting the pocket, obviously you can just cut out your cuffs. The cuffs get folded over so that the whole bottom and the back of the embroidery is completely covered um, by, you know, that piece of flannel. So that will get folded over on itself. And you could see those raw edges meeting along the top. So carefully place and position your embroidery design and cut out those pieces. And then we are ready to assemble the pajamas. Here's that robot and you can see this robot is a brother design and Emily kind of swapped in those really cool metallics. I'm gonna try to enlarge this just so you can see it a little, oh, I went smaller, didn't I? Just so you can kind of see those hints of metallics and that is a really fun little addition. And you can see this has a lot of just straight stitches in the design. So that's where you would add the fun hollow shimmer and sliver designs. Okay. Easier to see if I enlarge that. Okay. Before we get to the construction, I'm just going to answer some questions here. All right. Robot is so cool. Okay. This is a great question. And I think Maybe you all can also give your answers. Marcia says, how do you organize your thread when they don't have the weight listed on the label? So how do we organize thread, right? I mean, if you only could see everything that I hide from view <laughs> during the so what's. I mean, I'm just going to show you this for one thing, and it's kind of embarrassing. Um, so... When I am working on a project, let's say there's 10 thread colors in the design. Then I have my construction thread that I'm going to use, maybe a bobbin thread. So what I like to do is I put, <laughs> I got these at the Target dollar bins, which love me the Target dollar bins. And it's actually like a little cake stand, okay? <laughs> So next to my machine, these are all my embroidery threads I have in the design. These are the needles I'm going to use. And then I have my construction threads and a couple of bobbins. And I even have a hand sewing needle going. So now for the project I'm working on at the moment, I have everything that I'm using for that project on this particular little treat stand or cake stand. Um, I would like to say that I keep that organized every single time, but sometimes I just keep adding to it and then I have to restart and reorganize. Um, if there is no thread weight listed on your thread, now Sulky's is listed on the spool. So this says Sulky 40, right? Rayon 40 weight. So thankfully we have got our weight on the spool in most cases. We also have, normally I have these right next to me, but we also have slimline containers. Let me just grab one quickly if I can. And the slimlines are an awesome way to organize your threads. This one says Embroiderer's Dream Package. It's all Sulky 40 weight rayon. And then you can organize by color. You can also take these apart 
See how each side comes apart and you can kind of hang them on hooks in your sewing room as well. So that is really cool. But I find these are a great way to organize threads. And trust me, I have every single thread that Sulky makes. Um, so I really have to stay organized so that I know what I'm working with and I know what I'm showing to you all every single week. So I have a lot of these slimline containers. They come with threads and you can also purchase them empty. So if you have a lot of thread spools, no way of organizing them. We've got um, slimline containers that hold the smaller snap spools like I just showed you. We also have slimline containers that hold the larger king spools. So the 30 weight ray or the 30 weight blendables or solids, um, or if you buy your rayon or poly deco in the king spools, we have uh, slimline containers that hold those as well. So you can purchase those empty and fill them up, or you can purchase them full of threads. And then, you know, as you need a color, you know, you, you'll you easily be able to see like, oh, I'm missing this yellow right here and then I can go and restock it. So really nice. Okay, Betsy says, I would love to own a slimline container full of beautiful threads. Well, I will say that a lot of the times in our video casts and webcasts, we just may give away some slimline containers. So just saying. Okay. Loving the slimline organizer. Okay. Tomorrow, empty slimline boxes are buy one, get one 50% off. Thank you so much for adding that in there because I would have forgotten to tell everyone. So tomorrow you can get empty slimlines, buy one, get one 50% off. Great deal. All right, Beth has the containers and loves them. Okay, good, Denise, thank you. Denise says, I keep threads separated by weight using both slimline containers and a thread rack built into my sewing desk. Fantastic. All right. So if you have other ideas for organizing thread, please let us know because, you know, that should be one of our New Year's resolutions is to get organized in our sewing spaces. It is so difficult to stay organized. Okay. Let's continue on with the construction of our pajama pants. And I have to find my place here, so forgive me. Whoa, I went way too far. Um, forgive me for kind of reviewing a little bit. So this is us re removing that tear easy. Here is that cute robot. I believe that is where we left off. So now we need to assemble, right? So. Here is that embroidered cuff, and you can see it's folded over on itself. So again, backside of the embroidery completely concealed. You add those to the lower edge of each leg before we construct them. So as you can see, Emily likes to use those wonder clips. We have them at, at sulky.com in two sizes, and I am really falling in love with these little pointed ones. These come in a nice container. So again, talking about organizing yourself, love that they come in a container. And the container actually fits a pack of my larger ones as well, or wider ones, I should say. I have these all over the place. I use them for absolutely everything. These are the wider ones. You can certainly use pins as well to pin your cuff in place and then sew it. And again, you can use a serger set to a three or four thread overlock or your standard sewing machine. So you will attach that cuff to the pant leg and then we are going to sew the inseam of the pants. All right, so again, clipping that together, you can see there's a little bit of a top stitch too on the cuff. So after you sew that cuff on, you'll fold it to the right side. You can give it a little bit of a press if you need to and then top stitch so that your seam allowance lies nice and flat. Gives it a little nice detail as well. Okay, then we're gonna sew our inseam and you can see she did a serge finish here on the inseam. Make sure that your cuff seam totally matches up so that you have one nice continuous cuff 
and it doesn't look, you know, askew when you turn it right side out. And then speaking of that cuff, you know, we're going to have that seam going down the cuff to the lower edge. Now, if you have decided to not add your cuff yet, you're going to add that once the child grows three inches, then you will simply wait until your pants is totally constructed um, to do that final hem. And you can do a double fold hem or you can serge finish the edge and then press it to the wrong side and sew it. Um, but again, make sure that you're accounting for that when you um, decide on your inseam length for the pants when you're cutting out each pant piece. So since we have this seam allowance going down the cuff, Emily's touch is to uh, turn or fold your seam allowance um, or press it rather to one side um, because we either have a serge finish or you're going to zigzag finish that seam and just do a little stitch to make sure that it's going to stay toward the back. So, um, you know, when I'm making pants or a garment really of any kind, I want my seams going toward the back of the garment, not towards the front where they may, you know, it might look like you have a little fold or something poking out. Um, just press that always to the back. And then she adds this little stitch to make sure that that just stays put along that cuff lower edge. Okay, so now let's say you're adding the pocket, right? So we would want to add that pocket before we sew that inseam um, of the pant leg, right? So that it's kind of nice and flat for sewing on the pocket. So. This is a really simple pocket construction. It's actually not even lined. So if you want to line your pocket, you can cut a second pattern piece and back it with that and turn it right side out as if you're making even just like a pillow with four sides. Leave a little opening for turning, sew that opening shut or just top stitch it on the pocket. But this is really super simple and again, not even lined. So you can see all four corners here, she has serge finished. You can also just zigzag them if you don't have a serger. And then you're going to fold those raw edges toward the wrong side. So first you'll fold in the sides, then the lower edge, and then the top edge gets folded down a little bit wider than those other uh, seams. And then you'll sew along that upper edge of the pocket to create sort of the pocket you know, fold or um, what would you call that? The pocket cuff. I'm totally blanking on what we would call that. Apologies. <laughs> so at any rate, you'll finish that upper edge and then you're going to top stitch the pocket in place. So this allows you to really position it exactly where you want it. And you can see it's a couple inches in from that uh, inseam and quite a bit over from the side seam. So there are instructions in the pattern for where and how to place your pocket so it looks nice when it's worn. Sometimes if your pocket's completely straight on with that upper edge, it actually will look like it's sideways when the person is wearing it. So keep that in mind. Your pocket might look like it's slightly angled when you're sewing it on, but then when it's worn, it actually looks straight. So keep those things in mind too. You can always um, kind of put this piece on the wearer and then audition that pocket before you sew it on to make sure that it's in the place that you want it to be. All right, so now we're gonna sew that crotch seam from the upper edge down to that crotch point and then towards the uh, center back seam. So. I always recommend when you're doing pajama pants, especially with a knit. Now this is with a woven, but if you're working with a knit, this applies as well. Go from that lower edge crotch seam towards the center back seam, and then go from that lower edge crotch seam to that center front. And that just kind of evenly distributes everything and it makes sure you don't have any stretching or pulling going towards that center back seam. So. 
It may seem tedious to do it this way, but I find I have greater success going from that center point where you have your inseam and going up towards those upper edges on either side. All right, so once you've sewn that, your pants are really going to start looking like pants and it's time for the waistband. Now I should mention, when you're doing this crotch seam, we actually have one pant leg placed inside the other with right sides facing. Then you use your wonder clips or pins to pin just that crotch seam um, of the two pant legs. So once you have both sewn, you will turn one right side out, put it inside the other one so that right sides are facing and do that crotch seam. Okay, almost forgot to mention that. So now it's time for the waistband. So after you do that crotch seam, you're going to turn your pants right side out and we're going to measure for the elastic. And again, if you made your pants a little bit larger because you know your kid, grandkid, whoever you're making these for is going to grow like crazy, you can always make your elastic a little bit smaller and then swap it out when you need to make it a little bit larger. Or you can go on the um, larger end of your elastic. Um, they don't have to be super snug when worn, and then that gives your child a little bit of room to grow. So I believe she used um, an inch wide elastic. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. You want the no roll, um, good quality elastic. And you'll measure that upper edge and measure the recipient as well to cut your elastic length. You can also serge finish or zigzag finish the upper edge of your pants to make sure it's nice and flat and to make sure all of your seam allowances are going towards the back and everything's lying nice and flat. All right, so you can see how that inch elastic um, you really want your upper edge casing to be just larger than, or just wider rather than the elastic. And you can see that serge finished seam. Um, that's pretty much the only thing poking out or extending beyond that elastic width. So you will fold the upper edge of your pants toward the wrong side. So it's gonna be about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, depending on your elastic width and pin that in place, and then you can place your elastic inside of that fold after it is sewn. So you will sew just along that zigzag or serge finish. You could see those stitches are just above um, those serger stitches, uh, leaving just enough room for your elastic to fit inside. So. Be sure to leave yourself that opening to insert your elastic. You only really need two, maybe three inches of an opening. Um, so make sure that you mark that opening in some way. Double pins or pins going the opposite direction is a good visual clue to make sure that you leave yourself that opening because I don't know about you, but all of the time I just whip around the whole thing and then I've got to get my seam ripper out. <laughs> So now we will insert the elastic into that casing. I like to use a big old safety pin on the end of my elastic so that I can feed it through that casing, making sure that that end doesn't get lost when I'm feeding it through as well. Then you're gonna match those edges and sew them together. You can um, do a little X of reinforcement stitches. Um, you can either overlap uh, your elastic by quite a bit to give yourself a little bit, you know, more security, or I would say at least a half inch of overlap on your elastic and make sure that that um, overlap is at the center back seam. And that kind of also gives the wearer um, a visual clue for what is the back side and what is the front side. Another thing you can do is add a little loop of ribbon just grow grain ribbon or even just a fun decorative ribbon and just place that little loop 
inside that center back um, elastic seam, and that's kind of the tag so that they know when they're wearing it that that's the backside of the pants. So here you can see she is sewing a straight stitch along the pant seams, and this is really to make sure that your elastic stays put. So what I like to do is I will stretch out the pants and find that seam, sew along it, making sure that my elastic isn't twisted anywhere. And you can do it along each seam if you want, or just along the center back, or just along both of the um, side seams. All right, so that's just a great finishing tip for your elastic casing. And then you can see, here are our really cute finished cuffs of the pant with embroidery. The embroidery is actually facing the, let's see, facing the back of the pant. Let me just show you with the, oh, here are the cute pockets. Love that. Using a contrasting fabric so that you can really see the embroidery design. Great idea. And then here you can see those finished cuffs. And then the embroidery is along that side seam, actually, so that when you're walking, you can see that cute embroidery design showing itself. So really cute design. I love the use of the contrasting fabrics, and especially if you're making these for lots of kids or lots of grandkids, maybe they all get their own special print that speaks to them. You know, choose a licensed print of their favorite character or something like that. And then you tie them all together by using the same contrasting solid fabric. And so they're all kind of the same, yet all kind of different. And of course, you can choose that embroidery design based on the fabric print or based on the kid's interest. You can have them choose the embroidery design based on what is in your library and your computer. And that's just kind of a fun way that you can make this together and they have a really special memory of it as well. So I'm gonna go through and answer some more questions if we have any, Denise is like in the pockets. And you know, you can change up the pocket shape as well. You can round off the corners if you want. You can make the pocket a little bit smaller if you want. So really, there are tons of ways of personalizing this. You can make that cuff a little bit narrower if you want. You can add a monogram to the pocket instead of a design. So really, really, there are so many ways of personalizing it, and it's such a quick sew, honestly. I love pajama pants as a sort of gateway into sewing or a great first project for a beginner. You know, beginners, when you ask them what they want to sew, a lot of the times, in my experience, they pick something really complicated. Um, you know, they wanna sew pajama pants, they want to sew a backpack, they want to, you know, they really want to dive in. And I think that pajamas is a really great first project because then they get to wear it and show it off. And it's really, talk about instant gratification, you can sew these up in a couple of hours depending on how long your embroidery design takes to stitch out. It's really just a few seams that they have to do and lots of just straight sewing down that, um, down the side seam or inseam, you know, around uh, the waistband. So not a huge amount of sewing actually even needs to be done. So it becomes more about the lesson in measuring, the lesson in taping together the pattern pieces, and then getting to choose your own fabric. They're just going to love putting it together. And if you have any leftover fabric, you can sew some cute, matching scrunchies using some a um, little bit narrower elastic, make a scrunchie that matches the pajama pants and they'll be loving it. Make a version for one of their dolls that they um, take to bed at night. So lots of different ways to do it. All right. Sometimes I put pockets on the side like cargo pants. Perfect, that is another way of personalizing it. You can place that pocket anywhere that's comfortable for you, just kind of, you know, audition it, like I was saying. Audition uh, where you will put those, place the pattern piece around your leg, you know, put the inseam where it's going to go, and then just kind of audition that pocket 
and then pin it in place. And then you can, you know, finesse that placement while it's flat on your work surface. Okay. Should we float a water soluble stabilizer on top of the embroidery design when stitching? So with this flannel, it was a really um, tightly woven, lightweight flannel, and a topper really was not necessary. But if you do have a flannel that is plushier or heavier weight, or if you're going to use a fleece fabric, which could work for this uh, pattern, then yes, you will need a topper. Otherwise, your embroidery stitches are going to kind of sink into that fabric pile and get lost in the texture of the fabric. So that's what a topper is going to do. It's going to lift those stitches on top of that fabric surface, making them much easier to see. So good point. If you are using a plushier fabric for the pants, make sure to use a topper. But in this case, we didn't really need one because that um, lighter weight flannel was a really stable fabric with not a lot of texture to it. And Don says, this is a fun charity idea. That is a great idea. If there's a children's hospital or, or something like that that accepts donations, um, just check with them first, especially during these COVID times, if they will take donations like that. But that is a great, great idea. Or even shelters, um, you know, women's shelters, um, places like that, they might be looking for things like pajama pants. Um, so that's a great idea. Great grandkids gift. And again, this pattern is completely free at sulky.com right now. And I link to it in the description of today's post so you can head right on over and download it, save it to your computer, print it as many times as you wish. Just be sure to follow that um, template for taping together your pieces so that you know which piece goes where and how to align each, pa uh, each page so that you get those diamonds created um, by your little triangles and you'll be good to go. And again, really forgiving pattern, a forgiving fit. So if your diamond is slightly off or the lines aren't really matching up, you know what? It's going to be okay because we're not making a tailored blazer here. We're making some elastic waist pants. You know, if our line is a little bit askew, just kind of true it up and draw it straight and you'll be good. So don't stress about it too much. Um, it's a relatively simple sew, again, like I was mentioning. All right, Kristen says, I like to turn in the surged edge and then top stitch. Perfect. And, you know, top stitching can really give you um, a really professional end result, and it doesn't take too much more time to add extra top stitching. You could even do like a twin needle along the lower edge. If you're not adding that cuff, you can kind of double fold your edge, do a twin needle um, treatment. We have those at sulky.com. So lots of different ways you can construct these based on what works for you. All right. Sharon says, wonder clips are also great for hand sewing quilt bindings. No pins falling on the floor, etc. I mean... Love me some wonder clips. And I'm just going to say, if you're joining us for the video cast, which I talked about at the top of today's show, where we're going to make this bag from start to finish, you definitely are going to need those wonder clips. So if you don't already have them in your sewing room, grab some up at sulky.com. Um, they'll work for this project, the pajama pants, and you definitely need them for this Casey duffel. All right, Colleen says a drawstring would work too. That's a great idea. So, and that's another way to really make these pants super adjustable. So instead of adding elastic in that casing, you can add a drawstring. You can even use a shoelace. If you get like an extra long shoelace or you have one shoelace but lost the other or it got chewed up by the dog or something and you saved it, you can use that shoelace perhaps as your drawstring as well. It's a great way to make these super adjustable for when the kids are growing so fast we can't keep up with them. <laughs> All right, Don says the pocket would be cute with some rickrack. That's another great idea. So when you're top stitching that pocket on, you can insert a little bit of rickrack trim 
before you do that final top stitching and you'll have a cute little detail around the pocket as well. So really, really great idea. Betsy says, I'm going to have the grandkids assemble the digital pattern. What a fantastic idea. So introduce them to sewing and have them do that dirty work for you. <laughs> I shouldn't call it dirty work, um, but it does take some time to assemble those pieces and tape them together. But that's a really great activity, especially if your uh, grandkids are a little bit too young for the actual sewing part. Um, or they're just not interested in the actual sewing part for shame. Uh, you can have them help you tape together those pattern pieces. So another way of involving them in the process and, you know, having them have some ownership over that end result. They'll be so proud of them. All right. Love Wonder Clips. Just started using them and so much easier than pins. Absolutely. All right. Love the drawstring idea and putting the pockets on the side seam. See, that's why we're all here today is to learn from each other as well as get inspiration for our next make. So I hope that this inspired you to make some pajama pants. Really great idea for a cute little Valentine to gift to your grandkids or kids. Um, and again, great charity sewing project. Thank you for that idea. So get them involved. Uh, create some really, you know, fun memories together. Choose some embroidery designs. They'll have fun looking through the designs that you have on your computer. Or again, you can grab up that I Heart You machine embroidery palette and get all 10 rayon embroidery threads as well as a bunch of fun heart designs. You can add them to these pajama pants or other Valentine ideas that you might have in the works. So I mean, Valentine's Day is a couple short weeks away but you can definitely finish these pajama pants in a couple of hours or in an afternoon. Or, you know, if you're involving the kids, maybe a couple of days. We'll see. You guys let me know how it works out for you. And I hope you enjoy. Again, find that pattern at sulky.com. Be sure to register for the Casey Duffel. For all of you who just joined us and saw me pull out the gray colorway of the bag, I have one embroidered pocket on this one. This is the fabric that's in the lining as well. It matches the fabric print perfectly. And then on this side, I just have the same uh, rifle paper print um, in that beautiful canvas and lots of roomy pockets. There's also pockets inside. There's a double zipper. There's so many details to this bag. So we've got two interior pockets. I mean, it's just so roomy. It holds everything that you need. Lots of adjustable, you know, things here. You can have the handles or your adjustable strap. And you can also unbuckle this side and give yourself even more room. And then your bag takes on an entirely new shape as well. So, I mean, this is just such a versatile bag. You all will absolutely love it. High-end finishes. It looks completely boutique style. So choose from either the burgundy that I'm showing right there with the antique hardware finish. I'll show that to you. I can get it off my wall here. This is the antique hardware finish. So it's kind of a um, brushed sort of goldish, you know, antique. Um, and I just can't decide which one I love better. So anyways, be sure to sign up for the video cast. It's in a couple short weeks. I'll be talking more about it next week as well. Grab up your kit for that today. It's already on sale. So there you can see that antique with the burgundy or the nickel with the black faux leather. So choose from gray or burgundy or grab them both. You'll get the paper pattern included with the kit, which includes everything you need and we will sew together on February 8th. Actually, it's not technically a sew along because it's only 90 minutes long and you do need a little bit more time than that for this bag. You'll be learning some expert techniques. You will be, it's really, I would say more of an intermediate bag, but if you're a confident beginner, make sure to join us and um, I will give you all the tips and tricks that I learned working my way through this bag. I've made it three times now and I, I just love it so much. I cannot stop talking about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
lots of people with tips today. I really, really appreciate it so much. Betsy says, you could load your Casey duffel full of pajama pants and head off to the grandkids. <laughs> so I love it. Way to, way to make it all come together. Perfect. Great looking bag, fun duffel bag. So be sure to register for that over at sewingonline.sulky.com. And then you will find the kits at sulky.com. So two different websites. One is our education site and one is our e-commerce site. So on sulky.com is where you will buy up your kit, wonder clips, grab your pajama pant from today. And then sewingonline.sulky.com is where you will register for the KC video cast. And you can surf around and find other things to add to your library as well. All of our legacy webinars and webcasts and video casts that we've done previously are available to watch on demand at any time. All you have to do is register for them and they get added to your personal library and you can view them there at any time at your leisure. All right. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Love your comments. Again, I will be giving away the I Heart You machine embroidery palette to one of you lucky viewers who is watching, liking, sharing, otherwise engaging with the post today. You are all eligible for winning today's gift. All right, so please join me next week for another So What? And be sure to register for the Casey Duffel video cast so that we can share in this exciting bag making adventure together on February 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, have a great week, everyone. And I will see you next week for another So